as of now we should be familiar with objects that is JavaScript objects so let us drill into array of objects so which means essentially we would like to have an array to be created which can contain JavaScript objects we already knew that an array means it can contain multiple elements so in this case we are going to have the array elements as JavaScript objects themselves so first of all just as I already explained earlier we can have multiple objects to be stored in the form of an array or inside an array so in order to have that first of all we can declare a particular array as something like this array EMP currently it has got no elements so just making sure that it is an array with no elements at the moment and now you can assign more and more elements progressively to the respective locations so here what I'm saying is the first array element is zero so which means the location zero inside the array array EMP is going to be a new object called EMP so which means I might be already having a constructor function called EMP which will be accepting two parameters so I'm essentially creating an instance of that particular constructor function and the result is going to be an instance or say object which is going to have two particular members or say values so those two values are going to be assigned to the respective object members and the entire object is going to be stored in the zeroth location or say first location as part of array similarly I can have more other objects to be instantiated and assigned to the respective locations called one two three and we can always access each of those particular array elements using a loop so anyone familiar with array certainly knows that we can use a loop in order to parse through or traverse through each of the elements available in the array so similarly even here we can use a for loop which essentially starts with location 0 and goes through the length of that particular array and we can use I++ means we are literally going through from the first location till to the last location incremented by 1 so while we are going through each of those particular array locations we wanted to have those respective array locations to be accessed by using array of i so which means if i value 0 you are accessing 0th location but in 0th location we are actually having EMP which is nothing but an instance of an object so that object may have a member called employee name which essentially might have a value called jack so we are essentially saying like array employee of that particular location is nothing but an object please get that object and retrieve the value available in this member together with concatenation of this particular message further concatenated with some kind of value whatever it is going to return by executing this particular method which is going to be available in the object stored at the same location so that EMP object is not only having employee name and salary properties but it is also having a method called get annual salary which is essentially nothing but it is going to multiply the value of salary by 12 and that particular salary might be actually concatenated with the whole message together and finally will be displayed to the user so in that way we can access either the fields or properties of a particular object or the methods available in an object where that particular object could be part of an array so we can essentially have all of those elements available in the array to be retrieved using a loop and the members of those particular objects stored in the array also to be accessed in the same fashion using object dot member notation so let us quickly have a demonstration of array and objects so let me start with uh, a new thing called um, 0 8 for now okay so in this case I would like to start with script so in this script first of all I would like to have a constructor function to be declared something like v name 
and v salary. So those two are going to be the constructor parameters. And this particular constructor function is going to have two properties or say fields or members. So in this case, I'm initializing those two members with the respective values, whatever I'm going to send as part of the constructor function. And now I would like to have uh, get annual salary to be declared, which is going to be a function. Sorry, so this is a function, anonymous function. So I just do this in this fashion. So get annual salary is a function. And in this case, it is going to retrieve the value of the salary, which is nothing but whatever the value you have in here, to be multiplied by 12 and return that particular value back whenever I access get annual salary. So now that we have the constructor function in place, let us declare an array. So in this case, I would like to declare an array in this fashion. So right now it is empty, which means the array has got no values or say no elements. So whenever I would like to have a new element, in this case, I would like to push the element to the zeroth location of the array. So for that purpose, I can just say, I would like to create a new instance of employee or say new object based on employee constructor function. And it is expecting two values right now. So in this case, I would like to have two values to be provided in this fashion. So what I mean to say is this particular value will be assigned to vname and further vname will be assigned to ename property. So whenever I say array emp0 dot ename, we are going to get jag. And similarly dot salary, I am going to get 5400. Similarly, I would like to add a couple more. And this one is going to be one, two, three. So I have three instances. So I would like to have some difference in values here. And something like this. And I can also have something else. So once I have all the array elements and the array in place, now I can access each of those particular elements directly using a loop. So in this case, I would like to declare i as the loop indexer and it has to go through the entire array by just counting that particular length. So which means it has to go through each and every element inside the array. So I'm saying that as long as i is less than the number of elements available in the array emp, I'm good. So I++, plus plus, which means I would like to go through each of those elements. And now, in order to access a particular object, I can say object O equal to EMP of I. So which means I'm going to get that particular object directly into the variable O. So which means if I value is zero, I'm going to get array EMP of zero, which is nothing but this object. So that object I'm going to get in O. If I value is one, I'm going to get this object into object O. So now I can say alert O of, sorry, I already have the object, so O dot E name. So essentially nothing but I'm getting that particular member or say that particular value inside the member employee name of that particular object whatever has been retrieved using the statement so let us see if this is working fine right now i'm just getting only the employee name so let me execute this for and see how it is working and now you can see there's the first thing the second one third one and fourth one so we have all the values to be displayed. So now I can further concatenate this and say something like earns annual salary as, and I can say o dot get annual salary. So in this case, it has to give me the employee name along with the concatenated message together with the annual salary in this format. So similarly, I should have each of those particular employee details to be shown to the user. Similarly, instead of using O to create a variable, I can directly use array EMPI right here instead of O. 
so that I can get rid of this statement altogether. So this particular statement is not necessary anymore as because I am replacing that particular O with this array directly. So now I go and open this and now you can see we are getting the same value as expected.